Hello, so this afternoon I will discuss to you guys the Kingdom of Thailand. We will examine its type or form of government, national power, the people responsible in running Thailand's government, uh, foreign policy, and its geography. So let's start first on the form of government they have. So first is we have the constitutional monarchy, unitary state, and parliamentary system. So as you can see, Thailand's government is based on the constitutional monarchy that is quite similar to that of the United Kingdom in which a prime minister serves as a head of parliamentary government and a hereditary Thai king functions as a head of state. So this is somewhat unlikely to the Philippines which form of government is presidential and republic. So the present king of Thailand since 2016 is King Maha Vaheralongkorn. He is the only son of King Bumibol Adolyade and Queen Sikirit. So the king as the head of state however is given some powers and has a role to play in the machinations of government. So the king holds the position of head of the Thai armed forces, just like Rodrigo um, Duterte, the president of the Philippines, who is the chief of the nation's armed forces as well. So the king also retains some traditional powers such as the power to appoint his um, heirs, um, power to grant pardons and the royal assent. According to Thailand's constitution, although the state sovereignty is vested in the people, the king will exercise uh, such power through the branches of Thai government. So just like in the Philippines, Thai government also exercise the check and balance among its branches. So first, we have the executive branch. Um, the prime minister of Thailand is Mr. Prayut Chan Ucha, or also known as the head of the government of Thailand. So unlike the Philippines, the form of government we have um, designed that the president should be both head of the government in the state. So the Prime Minister is in accordance with the Constitution, um, selected first by an election in the lower house, then officially appointed by the King. So as a head of executive branch, um, he is also the leader of Cabinet of Thailand, or formerly known as the Council of Ministers of Thailand. So the Prime Minister therefore retains the prerogative uh, to appoint or remove any minister he or she chooses. So next is the legislative branch. So just like in the Philippines, uh, Thailand's legislative body is also composed of two chambers or bicameral system in which comprises of two houses. So first is the Senate uh, and next is the House of Representatives. So in the Philippines, we call it Congress, while in the Kingdom of Thailand, they call it the National Assembly. So National Assembly has 630 members. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, um, we have like maybe um, 300 plus or something. Okay, so both houses of the National Assembly meet at the Parliament House of Thailand. So the President of the House of Representatives is the President of the National Assembly, while the President of the Senate is the Vice President of National Assembly. Following is the Judiciary or Judicial Branch. So judiciary is composed of four distinct systems. First is the court of justice, next is the administrative court, then military courts and the constitutional court of Thailand. So the trial and adjudication of cases are the power, powers of the courts, which must be carried out in accordance with the laws in the name of the king. In the case of dispute on the competent jurisdictions between the court of justice, the administrative court, or the military court, a ruling shall be made by the committee consisting of the President of Supreme Court as chairperson, the President of the Supreme Administrative Court, the Chief of Military Judicial Office, and not more than four qualified persons as provided by law as members. While in the Constitutional Court, it is an independent Thai court created by the 1997 Constitution with jurisdiction over the constitutionality of parliamentary acts royal decrees, drafts legislation, as well as the appointment and removal of public officials, and issues regarding political parties. It is also consists of nine judges appointed by the king. So the current judicial system is organized in accordance with the 2007 Constitution of Thailand. So now let's proceed to the national power of Thailand. 
wherein we will be able to identify the reasons why their economy is stable or rapidly increasing. So Thailand is the world's leading exporter of rice, which according to Thai Rice um, Exporters Association, the country um, exported over 11.2 million tons in 2018 and 7.5 million tons in 2020. So Thailand is also a major exporter of shrimp, wherein they are titled as the world's leading exporter of shrimp products, supplying over 20% of the world's trade in shrimps and prawns. So other agriculture, agricultural products include coconuts, um, corn, rubber, soybeans, sugarcane, and tapioca. Next is gypsum. Gypsum is a soft sulfate mineral composed of calcium sulfate dehydrate, which commonly used to manufacture of wool board, cement, um, plaster of Paris, soil conditioning, a hardening retarder in Portland cement. Or in short, the material used to build the houses and establishments has this component existing. So Thailand is the world's second largest exporter of gypsum after Canada, even though the government policy limits um, gypsum exports to prevent price cutting. So the latest data of gypsum's export from Thailand total of $179 million in 2019. So beside of the aforementioned, I also list all the top 10 Thailand's export. First on the list is machinery, including the computers comprising of $37.7 billion or 16.4% of total export. Next is electrical machinery and equipment comprising of $34.1 billion or 14.9% of total export. Next is vehicles with $24.1 billion or 10.5% of total exports. Gems and precious metal worth $18 billion um, dollars or 7.9% of total exports. Next is rubber and rubber articles worth uh, $15 billion. Plastic and plastic articles worth $11.9 billion. Meat and seafoods um, preparation $6.6 .6 billion. Mineral fuels including oil uh, which is the $6.1 billion. Optical technology. Technical medical apparatus, um, $4.1 billion, and lastly, fruits and nuts uh, worth $4.2 billion of total exports. So we cannot deny the fact that Thailand has been developed its economy and country as a whole throughout the years with all of this frequent and persistent number of exports of goods and products from their country. Let's now move on to Thailand's foreign policy and international relations. So before we examine some of their agreements towards other international states, let's look into the, its um, foreign policy. So Thailand seeks to position itself as the gateway to mainland Southeast um, Asia. And as such, its foreign policy is focused on the immediate region. So their aim is to develop their economy more and to influence other neighboring countries as well. So first, we have the Australia and Thailand sign a free trade agreement in 2004 and New Zealand and Thailand sign uh, a closer economic partnership in April 2005. In April 2007, Thailand signed an FTA with, a Jap with Japan and, con and continues to pursue a number of other bilateral FTAs or free trade agreements. Next is Thailand's major security preoccupation has traditionally been with its borders and the international situations in neighboring countries such as Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos, and Malaysia. Then Thailand has supported an open international trading environment through the membership of World Trade Organization and joined as a founding member of both of the Cairns Group and APEC. So all of these treaties, agreements, and bilateral or multilateral agreements in, according, in accordance to Thailand's foreign policy has made a great, great impact to boost their economy and to make them more equipped in the challenges made by globalization. So before I end my discussion, let's view first the geography of Thailand. So Thailand has the area of 198,114 square miles, located 15 degrees above the equator. So Thailand sits in the center of Southeast Asia and shares a border with Myanmar to the north, Laos to the northeast, and Cambodia to the east. It is also divided into 76 political provinces with Bangkok being the capital. There are also four different geographic regions, all boasting their own unique landscape and terrain. 
So in January 2018, Chiang Mai, the Tourism Authority of Thailand, has highlighted Thailand's unbeatable geographic location at the heart of ASEAN and the ASEA Pacific region as a major reason why visitor arrivals will continue to grow strongly in the years ahead. Also, Mr. Pitsuan, the AT Deputy Governor for Marketing Communication, said Thailand has the best connections within the entire region. There are approximately 30 overland borders checkpoints open for travels by international visitor with Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Malaysia. So the ASEAN countries are collectively Thailand's largest visitor source market in Asia. So Thailand welcomed more than 9 million ASEAN visitors in 2017, with Malaysia being the largest market followed by Laos in Singapore. Mr. Pistuan also added that Thailand crossed the 35 million visitors arrivals mark in 2017 and is, and is anticipating tourism earnings from international tourism of $53 billion US dollars. So beside of their natural resources, the products um, exported, their geography has been an advantage to them for they are uh, likely to be the center of ASEAN Pacific region and the connectivity to the neighboring countries are easy and accessible. So that's all. I hope you learned something and thank you.